Bitcoin is less than 12 months away from its halvening event. And history has shown these have been some pretty significant times in the market. Not only is it in Bitcoin, but it's also in the S&P 500 and macro markets around the world. So is Bitcoin influencing these markets or are the rest of the markets influencing Bitcoin? In today's video, I want to show you some massive timing indicators that are giving us a look into the next six to 12 months. And if history is anything to go by over the last 50 plus years, these next 12 to 24 months could be very, very explosive for the markets around the world. This is your home of macro cycle analysis across the stock markets, real estate, and of course, Bitcoin and crypto. So if you want more of the best macro cycle analysis, you know what to do. Hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, we got heaps of big things to get through, but just quickly, we have a limited time triple bonus with Swiftex. It's a sponsor of the channel. And because Binance has basically closed down all accounts for Aussies, Swiftex, sponsor of the channel, is giving you a, tr a triple bonus for a limited time until this Friday. So link is in the video description. I'll talk about that more later. But the first thing I wanna get through is Bitcoin. And we got heaps of big cycles to get through. Basically looking at each of these six month blocks, what can we expect when it comes to the market? Now, S&P 500 is probably one of the best markets that we can cover because of the amount of data, the amount of history. This is the stuff that I go through almost every single video with you guys to have a look at what has happened in history to give us an insight into what we can expect in the future. We like to swing the probabilities in our favor, not with the news headlines, not with all of the talking heads online. I want to swing the probabilities in our favor using the data on the charts. One of the big things that we have covered over the last six to nine months is the low in the market. So the lows in the S&P 500. And more importantly, what I want to talk about in this video is what happens after these lows and what can we expect from Bitcoin when the S&P 500 goes ballistic, when it goes parabolic, when it breaks out of all-time highs and pushes into new uh, all-time high territory. But first, a quick recap of these lows and basically swing in the probabilities in our favor to see whether October is the actual low or can we expect further downside? Because that is the major thing that is still going on out in the media. There are still many analysts and macro cycle analysts that are calling for further downside. So the first thing I just wanna have a look at is October and the March period as well. This has been a huge piece of the puzzle to allow us to understand if this is the actual low or will prices on the S&P break down? Because if prices do break down on the S&P, then we'll have to anticipate that Bitcoin will also break down as well. So as for the S&P, we've uh, had a look at this in a ton of detail going back over the history of the S&P for 70 plus years. So quickly looking at the October lows, this white line right here indicates all of the Octobers throughout the history of the S&P. Now I've got some arrows here where there are very significant lows. This is on a monthly chart. So we're looking at the macro picture here. It might look like not much when we're just uh, comparing it to the last 14 years, but you've got to understand these are pretty significant events in the market when those, uh, when those times occurred. So we've got October and March. These are the two very, very significant lows that have formed in the market. June was also a very significant low. You can see that was basically a swing bottom in the market. Uh, the market put in a, another low, but then bounced and closed much higher than any of those prices that were previously put in. March came in, the big, collapses of the banks it was extreme news basically the most some of the most extreme news that we had throughout this uh, bear market going in coming in from the top of january and i would say probably the most extreme panic news that we had since the june low so pretty much the news had called for further downside many analysts are still expecting a lot of downside but the market is pushing higher and we've just seen for april one of the highest monthly closes with may still 10 days out from its monthly close. So maybe we'll get a higher close there. But in, in the past, we've had pretty significant lows that have formed on or around October. Very significant lows, maybe some flush outs, some big pushes to the downside. You can see these bottoms here were on uh, November. So around that period of October, 
you can get very, very big lows or very close to those lows like we had here in November. The other thing to note is that March low as well. Sometimes we get the low, sometimes we get a higher low and a higher low is extremely significant. I can't stress the importance of a March high, of a higher low. And in this case, we had it on March as well, which is basically the really strong date. So you can see throughout history, we've got a November low and then a March low. We're obviously looking for October, but it came in very close to that period. Then we had a March low. Market has bounced away from that point. That was the GFC. We had the dot-com bust, October low for that cycle, dead on exactly the same 20 years ago, March higher low, dead on exactly the same 20 years ago. Significant March lows in that period and significant wipeouts through October as well. So the market likes to do October lows and March lows. Again, throughout history, 1998, uh, we had very close here, which was in December of 94 before the market pushed on, basically ran to new all-time highs. 1987, this was the massive collapse that happened over the weekend. That was basically 50% in a matter of a week or so below October. From that point, market runs away, puts in new all-time high prices. We can keep going back in history. 1974, October low. Then the higher low came in in December. Market pushes up. Next high low, April. So we continue to see the market push up from those points. All through this period, lows, that's October, that's October, uh, just a month out from that. These are significant points going all the way back. Another significant low here, 1966, higher low, October 1962, basically 60 years to the day. We had the uh, June low. So that's what we're looking at, calling for the June and October period of 2022 to be significant lows. You can see June was the low in this case, October slightly higher low. 2022, June was a higher low, October was a lower low, and now we see the markets push away from that point into March, which was also a higher low 60 years ago. So history has shown that October and March are very significant times in the market for lows to occur. We've seen that for the S&P. The next thing is the timing aspect of these lows. If October is going to be the low, can there be another low in October? Could we see another low this October. If we want to look back and have a look at how long bear markets take, typically 292, call it around 300 days, any of these averages, depending on where they are measured from, whether it's going back to the Great Depression, 1929 into 1933, looking at that data moving forward, or starting after the Second World War, somewhere around the 1950s, it depends on where those data points are, can be all the way out to about 388 days. So somewhere between three and 400 days could call the next low. So how far along are we in this bear market? So basically, how far have we come since the top? Well, to this low, we were 273 days, basically nine months. So typically, a bear market will last about nine months, nine to 10 months. We're now currently 483 days into this bear market. So if we were to expect another low this October, let's go all the way down here, that'll take us out to 637 days. It is not likely that we would see another low this October. It typically doesn't happen that you'll get two chances for October lows in a bear market period, basically in a period where you've had a top and a low and a bounce and another low. It just doesn't happen. There is one occasion that you can see that we've had a longer bear market than the average. And this was the dot-com bust. And this is the one that everyone continues to point to for what might happen this time. We had a March low in between, then we had a September low and a bounce. And then finally, the October low finished off this entire downtrend. This entire downtrend lasted from the March top, another significant date, to the October low, about 31 months. So when we look back in history, there's a lot of lines on this chart at the moment, but if we look back in history, typically we do not see markets go more than about 10 months from their top to their low. If we start looking out further from that, the probabilities are way off our side. So many analysts that are predicting further downside they're starting to get into the 10% chance of it actually happening. 
sure, it could happen. Maybe we go through another dot com wreckage. And I know a lot of people would think that. However, the probabilities are way off our side, especially in terms of what's going on in the space with many uh, tech companies actually pushing to new highs. Even the global financial crisis had its first significant low after a major crash 13 months from the top. The final low, which happened in March, happened 17 months. Currently, like we looked at earlier, the top was January. The significant cycle low was nine months, basically dead on the average. And we're now currently 16 months into this bear market, basically from a top where we haven't put in a new top there. So 16 months into that, if we're at a GFC period, 17 months, that would be the low for the entire period. So for the market to go from where it is and break down all of these levels next month seems very highly unlikely. So with all of that data looking at the significant times for the lows to come in, that October and March period is a very prominent area that markets like to, to bottom in. And they're looking at the timeframes of those bear markets going back in history, all the way back to the, the 70s period with the inflation period. The odds are not in favor of further downside lows. Basically anything breaking past that October low or the current March low. The odds are not in the favor. That's why we're looking at uh, a more heavy upside. That brings us to Bitcoin now and the six month period cycles. So we've just seen our first six month period. If we're taking into account what's happening on the S&P, and of course, if the S&P is going up, then we'd expect Bitcoin to go up as well. Same in reverse. If the S&P goes down, we'd expect it to go down as well. Broadly speaking, macro speaking, doesn't have to happen day to day exactly. So we're looking to the upside. The first six months has just happened for BTC. That takes us right to this point of May. What can we expect over the next six month period? So we had the first cycle low here, 2015. And you'll see in a minute why I'm not using this period here of 2011 to 2013 in just a moment. But that's the first six month period. Basically moved out of the low into that uh, fresh high for that period. The next six months brought another part of the consolidation and a break to the upside, a break out of the consolidation or the accumulation, which then brought on a new accumulation zone. Market accumulated again for the third period into a new fresh high for that period that led into the halving, the halvening event, which then brought in the fourth period. So we had another consolidation of a few months and a break, and then a test of the previous old all time high. So that occurred basically around that fourth period to the fifth period. Sixth period leads us to about a new, or oh, basically leads us to a new all time high and then the bubble popping. But we want to focus on what's happening in this second period right now because that's essentially where the market's at. So for that, we see the accumulation, maybe a continued accumulation, and then finally a break of the overall accumulation. So that was cycle number one. Well, we'll call it cycle 2015. Moving forward to 2019, so the cycle of 2019 into 2020, the first six months saw accumulation and then a break. The second six months were still range bound. So basically where the market had pushed to in price, the second six months saw us range bound. The third six months range bound again. If you want to include the COVID dump, then it was still within the first stage of the six month period here. It wasn't until the fourth six months that the market broke out of the basically two or three accumulation areas, one, two, and three, and then started to test the old all time highs towards the end of that fourth period. The fifth period putting in new all time highs and then sixth period also putting in new all time highs. So we have a couple of cycles to work with going forward from here. You can see the second one here, we had an accumulation and then a break. The second period for 2019 was basically just a trading range because that first period was so strong. So a weak first period, and a good second period, a very strong first period, a weak second period. So now it's a matter of, is this a very strong first period or something similar to what happened in 2015, 2016? Or is it basically like this? I tend to think, that it's going to be something more like this. This period was from around 160 bucks all the way up to about 320. So it was about a hundred percent move, more consolidation, and then uh, approximately another hundred percent move. So what we've seen now is about a hundred percent move, almost dead on that. Maybe we get some consolidation and then a little move to the upside. So maybe this 
can be pushed up. We can stretch that out a little bit. Third period basically has slight accumulation and then a push up. Does it have to happen exactly like this? Of course not. It's probably going to be a mixture between this and this and something else in between. The main thing that we want to focus on is the timing of these zones. What happens within the timing and where do those lows and highs form? How does it look moving into that halving event? What we can see from the previous data, the S&P stuff, is that it's likely we've seen the lows for the market and the markets are getting ready to move. As I said in the intro, there is some massive stuff here that I want to have a look at that show us what is potentially going to happen for the S&P, which then is very exciting for Bitcoin. So if you love the macro cycle analysis, hit that like and subscribe to the channel. This is the stuff that we've been talking about for months on end, looking at this being the low. All the while, everyone else was telling us that this was wrong. The markets are going to collapse. Nine months, 10 months, 11 months later, it still hasn't collapsed. Same sort of thing for Bitcoin, looking at getting into these lows. Even if it wasn't the exact low, you can see now that it was a fantastic time to be buying. This is the stuff that we've been going uh, through many times before looking at the macro cycle analysis here for BTC and the stock market. So this is your home of the best info. Make sure you do subscribe. And if you're an Aussie, remember to check out that link in the top of the video description for that triple sign up bonus for, for SwiftX, 30 bucks of free BTC. Sign up and verify your account because obviously Binance is no longer, can no, no longer get your uh, fiat on and off with Binance in Australia. So check out SwiftX, link in the video description for that $30 sign up bonus. So next to that really exciting period for Bitcoin, once we start to see S&P break out. So we've seen now on BTC that we're into the second period. We've got to wait more than likely to until we get into that probably fourth area, that fourth six month period before we start to break out into all time highs. That's typically too late. That's when all the retailers here and it gets really crazy and noisy out in the market. So we want to get in before those areas. So it seems like we're still in a pretty good zone for that because we're looking at the low being in, in this first six month period. So if we go over to the S&P, let's have a look at the first and second bull market periods. These are those really clean moves to the upside. It's not as clean in this first bull market. So we go back now into 2011. So this was the period that uh, basically Bitcoin had its first real big move to the upside going from one cent to $32. So this is going to be a little different to what we currently see now because basically those moves are huge. One cent to $32, it's not going to happen again. We just have to understand that we're not going to see 300,000% moves to the upside from one cent to $32. All right. So moving on to the S&P, you can see these nice clean moves. They're that one big run. Sure, there was a little bit of uh, choppiness here and choppiness at the top, but there's a big clean run through the middle while BTC, which is this yellow line here, is making its run to the top. Now, the next area we want to look at is basically when Bitcoin breaks out of its all-time high, where does it go to in that next all-time high? What is the S&P 500 doing? So this is uh, 2013. So S&P 500 is 2013. There's some choppiness back here, but this is where Bitcoin breaks out and the S&P breaks out. Nice clean run to the upside. Then we start to get into some choppiness. This is the bear market that Bitcoin goes through. There's 2014, 2015, 2016. Then the breakout begins again. So here's the 2013 move to the upside. Clean for the S&P. That's what it looks like right through here. This is that big rectangle. So this is the choppiness of Bitcoin basically doing its accumulation zone before the breakout in 2017. So here is the 2017 breakout. BTC, we have the 2017 breakout. That's the top there. Fourth into the fifth, six months. We get the same thing here for the S&P. The choppiness, this was uh, late 2016, the election there, the uh, Trump and Hillary election. And then we get this nice clean breakout to the upside. Pretty significant move, pretty uh, volatile period. Basically, markets just going straight up. Then market tops out here for Bitcoin and uh, in January 2018 for the crypto market and for the S&P, you get this nice choppy consolidation period. Yes, with a few new fresh highs time and time again, but of course it was pretty volatile compared to uh, the previous uh, eras of the S&P. You can see the swings getting pretty wild, obviously the COVID dump, and then the market starts to break out here. Bitcoin also starts to break out towards the end of this, and then we go on that next run, 
which is our fourth period into the all-time high. Check out what's happening now. This is the choppy sideways period that the S&P goes through. Yes, there have been new highs in between, but the volatility is quite extreme, just like what we've seen here. So is this next period just another one of these and these and also back through these zones here where the market is basically chopping around to figure out what it does next? I tend to think so. That's where we're currently sitting. So once we start to see S&P break out of these highs, that could be somewhere around where Bitcoin starts to test its highs, like it has done uh, in each of these occasions. So a couple of months difference, but that's what it has done in the previous uh, cases here. Basically, it's risk on again, going or risk on even he more heavily than what we've currently seen. And you start to see those explosive parabolic moves to the upside. So our third six month period leads us out into the first half of 2024. And then our fourth six month period is our period from approximately May 2024 to November 2024. So potentially in the next 12 months, we might, well, at the end of this next 12 months, we might start seeing Bitcoin test these old all time highs. We may start to see the S&P 500 also test these highs. If it comes sooner, keep a lookout for that. There is approximately one to three month grace period where maybe the S&P breaks out sooner, then Bitcoin starts to follow. So if we're looking at that, potentially sometime mid 2024, we should see this thing break out. Now, if things change or if things happen a little quicker, we'll be on the ball with that. We're watching where the S&P begins its run to the top because that's obviously going to affect Bitcoin as well. Maybe it happens in this third six month period, which is pretty much sooner than any other time in history, barring these events here. This is basically that first period before any hardening even took place. So just focusing on these last two cycles of uh, 2016, 2017, and then the previous one of uh, 2020 into 2021, we're gonna keep a lookout for this third six month period, basically on the turning of the halving of next year, 2024. So for the next six month period, we could be looking at some more consolidation, similar to what we had 2019, similar to what we potentially had in 2015, where we might get this little bit of a breakout to the upside. But nonetheless, things are looking very positive. There are some pretty big macro cycles in play for Bitcoin and for the S&P, especially if these are the lows, as the probability seem to be on the side of these being the lows in the market, the June, October, March period. It seems like this macro cycle is just starting to heat up and you guys have been here from the bottom. So leave a little fire emoji down below for that YouTube algo, like and subscribe and Aussies, link the top of the description for the SwiftX triple bonus until this Friday. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, take care and peace out.